That's why I say the prosecution and the defense are on the same side. You cannot, you can force them to prosecute, but you can't force them to win. You can force them to prosecute, but you cannot force them to try and win. We can put forth two witnesses. And that's all. I was listening to the trial and I heard uh, this Vietnam veteran testifying. And I was listening to the questioning that was being uh, done. And I said, man, how is the attorney making all those leading statements? How is he leading the witness that way? How, why is the the other side not objecting to those leading questions that are uh, eliciting uh, testimony that the attorney wants the client or the other witness to uh, testify to? Why isn't that being objected to? And then I turn around and I said, oh, that's not the, uh, that's not the uh, defense attorney. That's the prosecution that's making these uh, leading statements. And I couldn't believe it. I was I was shocked. Uh, I, I, was, I was in disbelief that here we have the, the uh, DA eliciting testimony from the defense witness that helps prove the defense case. Here we have the DA uh, making statements that are affirmed by the witness, this Vietnam vet, that yes, that was. Uh, Zimmerman's voice. I couldn't believe it. I mean, do people are people blind and dead brain? Can you see what's happening in this trial? I can. I don't believe this guy actually stood up in court and 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 uh and tried to uh, increase the credibility of the defense witness regarding this issue of voice identification on the 911 tape. Let's listen to uh, how the DA reinforced the credibility of this defense witness and try to assure the jury that they should in fact believe this witness. They should in fact believe this Vietnam veteran identification. Let's take a look at the, uh, test, the actual testimony of this Vietnam veteran and the, uh, uh, the questioning by the DA that assured his credibility to the jury that he was, that the, the, uh, the uh, Vietnam veteran was in fact correct in his identification of Zimmerman's voice being on the 911 tape. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I'm not just making this up. Let's take a look at what the DA said. Right. Now on that recording, um that you listen to the 911 operator. I'm sorry, the, the they're calling it the Lauer, the one that Mr. O'Mara played for you. I'm not going to play it again. You know which one I'm talking about? The one yes, that you listened Saturday. I apologize. Yes, sir. Okay. It was similar to the one that was played in court, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you heard the person you believe is George Zimmerman yelling, help, 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 continuously, correct? That was absolutely George Zimmerman. Right. And he was yelling, no, no doubt in your mind, you, you believe it's George Zimmerman. There's not a single doubt in my mind, sir. And he was yelling over and over, help, 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 correct? Yes, and I heard others, there's like other screams, help, but the screams in particular, I, I could tell, I, I knew that that was George Zimmerman. In this case, the only voice you're able to pick out is George Zimmerman's voice, correct? The voice screaming on the tape is absolutely George Zimmerman, sir. Who is he trying this case for? You were already familiar with his voice, but you were trying to compare it to just the 911 recording on Saturday? Yes, sir. Okay, you didn't go back and listen to any other recordings? No. Okay, that's what I was trying to get. You you didn't compare it to any other voices that he had made prior calls or anything like that? No, sir, I didn't need to. Okay, because you already knew his voice. So you heard other screams to her? There was help. There was some other ones. I those particular emotional, obviously when 
someone is uh, in dire straits, whether it be in combat or anything else, your voice obviously changes. I've heard a 250 pound man, I can mean, sound like a little girl screaming. And you, but before you get there, you even, you know who he is. Right, so, so you had, you believe there were some that were definitely George Zimmerman and others you heard you couldn't make out who it was. If I understand you correctly. The voices I heard screaming and for help were George Zimmerman. There All were other voices up on top of that. Uh, in the tape, there's 911 operator, there's other stuff, which oddly enough, I'm familiar with because in the din of battle, you have a lot of extraneous other noises going on at the same time. Other but people as, yelling or other people, whatever, speaking? Other people yelling. At the same time, you've got small arms fire, you may have mortars, rockets, you've got people screaming. Uh, but you still have the ability to pick out the ones that you have to run to as a medic. Uh, if I may, why did you have to listen to it twice if you, at the first time, knew it was George Zimmerman's voice? I don't know. I just played it a second time. Just to verify it in your mind that you would be sure that you could come to court and say, absolutely? No, it, it was just an emotional Okay. Uh, experience for me, and I okay. don't even know why I played it twice, okay. but I did. Okay. And I gather you were you made sure you were in a room setting where nobody else was present, correct? Yes. Okay. And can you believe that? That's incredible. Who is he trying this case for? Then we have the DA cross-examining the Vietnam vet. And the cross-examination amounts to uh, certifying and uh, embellishing the testimony of the Vietnam vet's identification of Zimmerman on the 911 tape. The cross-examination of the DA, what it amounted to was testi testimony that what the Vietnam vet said was in fact true and that the jury should in fact look at his testimony and believe what he said. Incredible. Institutional racism all over the place. And you want to wonder why somebody said they're institutional racism. I took a deposition of you back, I believe it was May 9th, maybe, of this year, correct? Yes, sir. And then we took yours and it was very brief, correct? Yes, sir. You never mentioned anything about testifying, about identifying the voice, or did you? Uh, I don't believe I did, sir. I don't believe it was asked. As I recall, everybody who was hungry. So you think it was just short, or you, you didn't mention anything about that? Didn't I ask you what you were going to be testifying about? Uh, I don't believe, I don't remember being asked if I was going to testify about it at, at the time. Who is he trying this case for? You can make them try it, but you can't make them win it. Why do I say this is institutional racism? Well, how can you not say this is, it is not institutional racism? You have a black boy that was murdered by a, a, a white man, not arrested, not arrested, just let go. No probable cause. There's no probable cause. Then they came back after the, the thing became televised, and all of a sudden they found probable cause. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is a manifestation of institutional racism. Why do I say this case is about racism? You have a judge saying nobody can mention anything about racism in this case when there's obviously uh, evidence that the defendant made a reference, a racial reference when he said those people always get away. We all know what those people mean. There is, is evidence of institutional racism in this case when the DA only brings in two witnesses to prove the most important issue in the case. And these two witnesses are obviously biased, the mom and the brother. And the opposite side brings in expert witnesses from all over the world. Ten to eight to ten to twelve, I don't know how many, but it, they brought in several witnesses to prove a case. And the state knew that these that the defense would bring in uh, all of these witnesses and did nothing, absolutely nothing, to contradict these witnesses, witnesses by bringing in the cousins, the friends, the family members, and other people that could have been witnesses on behalf of the state identifying the voice of Trayvon on the 911 tape. We have, we have the police officers testifying the evidence in this case that Trayvon's daddy said he could not identify the voice. That's, they represent, these police officers represent the, uh, the uh, law enforcement institution, institutional racism. Trayvon's daddy said the police officer lying. Institutional racism. We had the defense witnesses testify on behalf of Zimmerman. We had the Sanford Police Department testify on behalf of Zimmerman. Now we have the DA testifying on behalf of Zimmerman. All white jury, all white DA office, all white defense counsel, and a white judge. Everybody white, and everybody testifying on behalf of Zimmerman. Incredible, unbelievable in America, 2013. And with that, Thank <laughs> you.